Okay, call the meeting to order. Uh, good morning, everyone. It, it is uh, Tuesday, January 17th at approximately 9.04 a.m. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, and Let the record reflect the commissioners with Gray, Hara, Ninberg, and Glazier are present, and you have a quorum. Very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, uh, flag salute. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, commissioner comments. Any comments? Uh, actually, yesterday um, I participated in the Kingdom the Kingdom Day Parade with uh, Chief Peralta's Chief uh, Rideout. Uh, we really missed uh, uh, Commissioner Woods Gray and her husband, especially, <laughs> who last year uh, was phenomenal. But, uh, but but I thought it was a great event. Um, uh, actually, prior to the event, uh, uh, on our way to the uh, to the uh, staging uh, area, um, both uh, Cody, our two drivers, Cody and Phil, basically, uh, we came across an accident, and uh, and they attended to the accident, and then got back in the, you know, uh, in, yeah, in our, um, you know, in in our two uh, vans and went off, <laughs> but. Um, uh, I, I think I did mention last time that uh, Kaiser Permanente was good for uh, uh, funding um, the nurse practitioner response unit, and uh, and then I think I anticipate hopefully we'll get funding from uh, uh, from Ka uh, Kaiser in terms of both the uh, the youth program uh, uh, as well as the uh, mental health program. Very good, thank you, Mr. Woodrow. I call attention to an ad that was in the Beverly Press, and it talked about these photographers that we had talked about at a previous meeting. Um, I wasn't happy with the ad, uh, what they were requesting. It, it really pointed out to me that the people who are already working, they were not going to be the ones that maybe continue to do the work. It sounded like an elitist group by the ad. Um, and so I think we really need to look at that. Uh, because it sounded like there were going to be people that were just invited to go and do p photography. There are many times when there are crises, and I see the pictures from them, and I really do enjoy seeing those up-close pictures of events that have taken place. And as I look in the um, that magazine that we get with all those firefighting pictures in it, I do see a diverse group of people who are taking pictures, even my neighbor. It's one of the people who, I guess they just take them at will, but someone selects the pictures. I really think we need to, we will have to look at that. But I was happy that I got that Beverly Press ad because the way it sounded was it was going to be people who were invited to graduations and promotion ceremonies, and I'm really not very interested in those because I go there myself. I want to see pictures from other things that I don't go to. And so I would uh, just wanted to bring up the fact that I wasn't happy with the ad and that it didn't seem to address the issues that I was concerned about or that I thought I heard here at the meeting and that we really need to look at that again. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, let me look at the ad. Uh, my understanding is that we're not precluding anybody from taking pictures at emergency scenes and, and those that are invited to department events, that you have to be a, a member of that group to do so. And we took almost everybody. It was put almost, I think almost, Photographers, but let me look at the ad, and we'll we'll sit down and we'll look at it again. Thank you, Commissioner Nimber. Anything to say? I just want to say Happy New Year, everybody. Um, welcome back. And uh, I went down to MFC, and I had a tour. It was really fantastic, and I'm really 
really looking forward, and thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Hara, for helping secure the funding for the nurse practitioner unit. I'm really excited to see how that affects the allocation of resources and if it affects the numbers, you know, of calls that people, it can reduce it for our members will be essential. So I'm really excited about it and I see that the department is progressing in some really innovative ways. So I'm very, very excited about this new year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, thank um, the crew at uh, at Station uh, 55, um, also known as the Double Nickel. Um, and I, you know, on, on that ride out, um, not only was I extended great hospitality by great crew, but I, I also reached a particular mouth in this department. I have now officially met every Navarro brother uh, who is currently serving, um, as well as the nephew slash son. Uh, <laughs> so um, they, uh, which um, I, having five members on the department, I think, um, I think speaks to, frankly, the best of when uh, you have um, a, a deep commitment from uh, an entire family to the success of our department. Um, so I have enjoyed meeting each of them in turn um, and uh, look forward to continuing to see them um, out in the field. But, uh, I had a great ride out, uh, so that's what I got. Okay, uh, moving on to reports of the fire chief. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, I'd like to echo uh, Commissioner Hara's comments that uh, Kaiser stepping up and funding two six-month pilots and nurse practitioner units is a significant milestone for us. Uh, the first hospital was Cedars. I have to give them credit. Uh, they did come up with a check first, but Kaiser was a close <laughs> second. Uh, combined with our first unit in the field already at 15, uh, that's four, and we're working collaboratively with the airport to uh, launch a pilot clinic which will help us out on, in the, the airport fire stations and reduce their call load. So I think that uh, we're making progress. Uh, we were not funded for these things. These are, are paid for in part uh, by the hospital, and we pay the other part. So it has required us to um, develop relationships. And myself and Dr. Eckstein have met with multiple hospitals, and we have more in the pipeline. Uh, when we uh, get word that they're um, we're willing to partner with us. We will make those announcements, but I'm very optimistic about our future in that effort. Nurse practitioners at our Metro Center, uh, Metro Dispatch, we did get funding for through an innovation grant, a Mayor Garcetti innovation grant, to have two nurse practitioners or physician assistant um, be placed at Metro to help reduce our low-level EMS calls. So that is a pilot program that will launch. We're targeting July of this year. We're meeting with the dispatchers in all three platoons to get their input and to develop the best pilot program possible with, with great metrics. And I'm hopeful that that will be um, a permanent um, resource for us. In terms of events, December 22nd, we had our Chief Officer Staff Appreciation Luncheon at Hodgkin's. Uh, great event. I have to thank all the chief officers uh, that contribute. And every year we have all the chief officers contribute. And uh, we had a large uh, showing from our civilian population. Very well attended. And then the following day, December 23rd, uh, we had our supply and maintenance annual inspection. They do an interesting thing at the shops. They actually have annual inspection before they have their Christmas breakfast. And myself, and I had a large inspection party with me, uh, many deputy chiefs. And the shops look immaculate. It looks great. Uh, their safety record has dramatically improved. And we're going to be recognizing them shortly because they've had a, a significant number of reductions uh, from past years. And then on January 10th, we had our All Chiefs meeting, Operation Central Bureau at uh, Hodgkins. Had about 50 chiefs or so. We're trying something different this go around. We're doing one in each bureau, so we'll do four chiefs meetings. The idea was to have smaller groups and to encourage more dialogue, and we had a lot of good dialogue. So I think um, we'll do one of our chiefs meetings like that each year, and we'll do the large group together. That will we'll alternate formats. On January 11th, I was with uh, Chief Beck. We went to the city club. We had a town hall meeting. Uh, it was during a luncheon. And basically, we were um, answering questions from a reporter. 
who was the moderator and from the audience. And we have a lot of similarities with LAPD, and they're a great public safety partner. Um, I left there with uh, being very proud of the men and women of our department. Whenever we have an opportunity to talk about what we do and why we do it and how we do it, I want to be there, and I want all my chiefs to be there to give proper recognition to the work that our people do. You'll hear a little bit later of a great rescue this morning from Chief Palacios. In that, one of those questions was about technology in that, in that town hall meeting. And I'd like to announce that we formally have hired a new Chief Information Officer, Scott Porter. So I knew from Gartner. Uh, he's been with us through his Gartner role for the past two years. And we're very excited to announce that in March he will officially be ours. Uh, he has already submitted the Gartner Technology Strategic Plan. We're already starting to talk about it in all chiefs meetings. And I think it's a great step forward for the LAFD. And then yesterday we participated in the MLK um, Kingdom Day Parade, very well attended by the community. Uh, we had Life Force 94. We had the bandwagon out there. We had our recruitment van out there with all the signage. And I'll tell you, it's a, it was a very, very um, strong showing by us in LA County Fire Department. And we missed Commissioner Woods Gray there. We didn't have the siren uh, activated nearly as much. <laughs> so um, it was a lot of fun, and uh, we look forward to participating next year. That concludes my report. Um, President, may I comment? I, yes, I, please. I forgot to mention the Chief's Luncheon. I went attended, and it was wonderful. The Chief is a great chef. I mean, he just had so much wonderful food there. Did the Chief? <laughs> <laughs> and if you could have seen all of the chiefs in their aprons and their little red hats, some of them, oh, it was darling. It was so cute. It was a great event, and they had wonderful – you guys were at all these prizes. What amazed me was how many other people worked for the fire department other than the firefighters in the stations. Uh, and it was uh, a great group of people, and I, of course, walked around and talked to the people from the shops and the different places, which was really good for me because I can't get to see all of those people in their places where they work a lot of the time. So I did enjoy, and I was happy that I was able to attend the Chief's Luncheon, but he does have, it was a wonderful spread. As I said, you should have seen all these guys out there and the gals <laughs> in their aprons and Santa hats. And I think that's really nice, Chief, that you do something like that to uh, for the for the staff, and that the the prizes, my goodness, those were great prizes. They had wonderful trips and all kinds of great things for the uh, staff people. So it was really wonderful. I I enjoyed it, and I'm just happy to see that they do that kind of outreach for us to support the staff. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, I also I forgot to mention I, w I was able to attend the inspection at the shops, um, and. Um, little known fact, uh, at the inspection, um, all the uh, vice, uh, the table vices, I guess, am I calling that the right thing? Um, they, um, they, they turn them into uh, animals with um, tape. And I don't know if anybody's ever been on a cruise ship. You know, you get the cruise animals. Uh, the, I got pictures, I'll show you. But they, they made some amazing animals uh, out, of their, out of their table vices. Um, uh, rhinoceri and uh, and elephants. Uh, so uh, and then I, I believe the, the chief gave an, an award for the uh, best, which went to the the light vehicle shop. Yes, the uh, the vice um, event was unexpected, <laughs> but as I was we were making the rounds, they became more and more elaborate. And when one area of the shops didn't have an elaborate vice, we made comments to that they need to work on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, I was impressed with uh, their creativity. I'll pass a quick photo down of uh, a warthog that I thought was particularly good. Uh, anyways, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your comments. All right. Uh, so we have um, a verbal report on the city of the incident. Hi. Good morning, Commissioners, Chief Terrazas, uh, and uh, Ms. Gomez. Welcome back. Good morning. Sir. Good morning. Um, on Sunday night, uh, Fire Station 34, we had a uh, fire at uh, 3730 Edge Hill Drive. Uh, the first companies on scene found a um, 
very uh, light smoke coming from a, basically a, a dwelling. They went inside. They found an overstuffed couch that had pretty much been consumed and completely burned out. They did find a uh, female down on the ground. They tried to resuscitate numerous times. They transported, and unfortunately, she was pronounced dead. That's our first fatality of uh, 2017. And then last night, you probably saw it on the news, um, at uh, 81, 8, 861 Manchester, uh, companies arrived very quickly. Uh, the uh, Engine 57 was developing the hose line to go in the front door. Uh, truck 33 was going by uh, an old window. Uh, before they were taking the hose line in, uh, one of the firefighters noticed something in the window, jumped in through the window, uh, discovered four small kids, um, various ages, two, three, five, and eight, um, were able to get in quickly with, with the heavy smoke. It's uninvolved, but it was heavy smoke. Uh, we're able to pass the kids out, get them out of the environment. Uh, they were uh, assessed, treated, and we transported them last night to uh, LA County Harbor Hospital. Um, all four are still alive, um, you know, intubated. So uh, we hope for success there. Um, hats off, we made a great rescue by 30, uh, Truck 33's member to, to not recognize that, crawl in the window even without with the heat and the smoke. Um, uh, we are out there doing uh, canvassing. Uh, comment, we had a brand, uh, Captain Telemontes, who's now Chief Telemontes, did a very good job, new BC. A lot of chaos at the incident with people and kids, and uh, did a very good job of managing the incident. I my hats go off to him as well to keep things calm and chaos. Um, but those are the two incidents. Uh, you have any questions on those incidents? Uh, just a comment. I did hear the news on that report, and it was said that the L.A. FD, LAPD arrived first, but they weren't able to get in there because of the heat. And so we really thank the LAFD because they know exactly what to do and how to get in there. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Honorable members of the board, Chief Terrazas, welcome back. Ms. Gomez, I wish you all a good morning. Also to the representative from the city attorney's office and the management staff of the LAFD. Uh, my name is Armando Hogan, assistant uh, chief, assistant bureau commander out of Operations West Bureau, and just wanted to bring to your attention an incident that we had last Wednesday, January 11th, 2017, at 11.29 hours. Uh, this was incident number 730. Uh, members of Operations West Bureau, in particular Battalion 5, uh, responded to 8189 Gould Avenue uh, there in Hollywood uh, when first arriving units found a hillside descending single-family dwelling with a patio that had been impacted either through rain or through uh, from a uh, previous work being done that was separated from the structure. And what we ended up having was about a 9,000-pound concrete slab there across Laurel Canyon Boulevard, which sits about 100 feet uh, below. Uh, initially on that Wednesday, we uh, took precautionary measures to make sure that there would be no traffic going through. And then on Thursday, the next day, uh, I was there with members from the Bureau of Engineering, uh, geologists, structural engineer, as well as uh, individuals from Building and Safety, Public Works, DOT, LAPD, and Emergency Management Department as well. The particular house in, uh, involved, the 8189 structure, was red tagged, meaning it was not safe to enter, and then the two houses on either side of that were yellow tagged, meaning it was only for a limited entry for those who lived in the area. Uh, for the most part, uh, we worked in uh, collaboration with Council Office uh, 4, Council Member Rue, uh, where we came up with a plan where we put K-rails up at the uh, intersection of Gould and Laurel Canyon, which would be traveling from the south going north and then to the uh, next intersection, which was Kirkwood, which would be to the north. Uh, at this point in time, K-Rails have now been set up, and they have one lane open, which in this case would be the uh, northbound lane for travel. Uh, other than that, it worked really well, meaning we uh, adhered strictly to strategic goal number six, which is to strengthen our community relationships. Uh, but outside of that, uh, there is a community call today coming from the council office. They are going to host that to just make a determination on what the next steps are. Uh, I'll take any questions that you may have at this time. 
Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, medical director. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Significant so EMS incident since our last meeting. On uh, January uh, 10th, a uh, 45-year-old gentleman apparently was trying to uh, obtain copper wire from a, a transformer downtown on Central, resulting in a, a transformer fire, subsequent uh, critical burns to about 40% of his body. Uh, unknown if he's going to survive that incident. He was treated by uh, engine and rescue for transport at the County USC Medical Center. On uh, January 14th and 34th, first day, there was a physical rescue resulting in one fatality and three critical patients. On the uh, 15th and 66th is uh, first end, there was a uh, uh, male and female riding high speed on a motorcycle, and unfortunately, uh, uh, somebody turned left, getting a probably apparently a potentially illegal U-turn in front of the motorcycle, resulting in uh, uh, the deaths of both uh, riders of that motorcycle. Uh, as Chief Palacio mentioned, incredible rescue last night with four uh, children critically burned with smoke inhalation, all transported to Harbor UCLA. Uh, with subsequent transfers to probably County USC Burn Center today. Uh, we had a couple of uh, saves since the last uh, meeting on December 12th. In the 20, uh, 21's first and engine rescue 21 responded on a 62-year-old gentleman. A um, little unusual, he was found in cardiac arrest. Our dispatchers at um, MFC did a wonderful job uh, providing uh, emergency instructions for CPR. Uh, despite the fact this gentleman was found in uh, asystole or flat, flat line rhythm, uh, he actually, uh, they actually got pulses back in the field, and he actually made a full recovery, which was extremely unusual. So great efforts by uh, everybody in the chain of survival there. And on January 10th, there was a gentleman, a 68-year-old gentleman in Fire Station 15, uh, 16's first in, a uh, 68-year-old gentleman at the dialysis center, also cardiac arrest, um, with uh, great resuscitative efforts on scene. I was able to also respond, uh, got pulses back, and we're anticipating this gentleman will also make a uh, full survival. Uh, and that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, moving to uh, presentations. Good morning. Good morning. I am Daniel Curry. I'm captain and public information officer for the department. And to continue the theme of the great work that Supply and Maintenance Division does, uh, today we are here to honor the purchasing unit. We have five members of the purchasing unit here. If I could have them come up and stand here to my right. Thank you. Uh, the purchasing unit is the fire department's single point of ordering for just about everything uh, that we have on the department, including firefighting apparatus, light vehicles, firefighting tools and equipment, uniforms, badges, personal protective equipment, medical supplies, kitchen appliances, fire station furniture, office furniture, office supplies, ceremonial plaques, and even in this very rainy year, sandbags. Uh, they support all logistical functions for major incidents. Uh, they handle the procurement of all fire department apparatus, as I mentioned. They also manage and coordinate the fleet fuel program for over 1,200 vehicles on the department, including all the, uh, the Voyager fuel card program. They are the subject matter experts for the new financial management system that's coming online called FMS 2.0. And they even uh, play a major role in our environmental compliance program. Uh, they coordinate hazardous material pickups and the maintenance of documents relative to environmental compliance. So we wanted to take this time to recognize them. Uh, the certificate reads and follows. In recognition and sincere gratitude of your dedicated service, diligent efforts, and commitment to the department which contributed to improving procurement of apparatus, equipment, tools, and services, to better support the field and administrative offices throughout the department, the Los Angeles Fire Department commends you and extends our appreciation for your initiative and outstanding support with logistical support for events and activities, large and small, to our sworn and civilian members at all hours of the day and night, presented the 17th day of January 2017 and signed by Fire Chief Ralph M. Terrazas. We'll take photos in a minute. Um, this group was brought to our attention during our Christmas breakfast inspection. And uh, Chief uh, Wade White 
and um, she fried out. Couldn't speak uh, highly enough of the work that they do every day. It's been my honor to stand before you for the last two and a half years to highlight our people that perform excellent jobs, and this group truly does. I always wanted to meet the person that creates and signs that check for $17 million for our new helicopter. <laughs> I've never had that honor. It must be quite powerful feeling that you have, hoping that it doesn't bounce. But I asked that question that morning, and I didn't meet the person. And they really do cut a check for that amount. So with the restoration of our department, it just doesn't happen uh, overnight. And it's just not one person. There's a chain, kind of like the chain of survival that Doc always talks about. There's a chain throughout our organization from the budget to the procurement to the check writing. And these, the purchasing unit plays a vital role in that chain. So congratulations and uh, very proud of you. And I look forward to taking pictures with you. And would anybody like to say anything? I neglected to mention uh, the names of the individuals receiving the award. Uh, first of all, we have Elizabeth Barunda. She's the Senior Administrative Clerk. We have Principal Clerk Marita Capilli. Uh, Administrative Clerk Mavis Walter couldn't be here. The newest member is holding her certificate, uh, Ms. Victoria Johnson. And we also have uh, Isabel Moreno, another Administrative Clerk. And finally, Kendricks Lundy, Administrative Clerk. So those are the uh, honorees today. Thank you. Yeah, I've um, been there six years now at the shops, and uh, it's amazing the um, just how instrumental this group is. Really, the, the hinge pin as far as this entire organization um, we spent a lot of time working with June and her staff getting the funds. And then how do you how do you spend those funds? Well, this is a group right here that does it. They uh, spend it and uh, make sure that it's all, uh, everything's appropriate, that we're following contracts, and that uh, we're um, being mindful as far as what the budget is. Um, I can stand any audit. Challenge out there because of this staff right here. So I really appreciate appreciate you all, and I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and I echo the thanks of everyone. Um, you know, I always think it's I always think it's uh, worth it every opportunity we get to to recognize our civilian staff that are so important to support the uh, 
the work of our first responders out on the front lines there. Uh, this system all works together, and um, we, we are nothing without uh, both. So thank you for that. Okay, moving on to our uh, agenda. Um, first, um, commissioners, I'd, I'd ask that we continue item um, 5A, uh, the PSD report, if that's all right. I'm going to continue that for two weeks. Okay. Very good. Um, I'd like to take up the consent item, but before we do, we have a comment on item 4A. Um, uh, Patrick Butler. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Chief Trazes, uh, Patrick Butler, representing the Chief Officers Association, recommend, uh, represents the command officers of the uh, department. I, too, would like to recognize the civilian staff for everything they do and uh, really a great honor and tribute to them for their hard work. What I'd like to really speak about today is just the uh, status of reports, which is normally a consent item, but I just want to point out there's a couple on here I'd like to know if uh, in the future we could have a little more involvement. There's two reports that are coming forward to the commission next month. One is the modification of the disciplinary process, and uh, just ask that the Chief Officers Association be part of any discussions on that aspect as well. Uh, we're really uh, fortunate to have a great relationship with uh, PSD, Chief Crowley, Chief Richter, and Chief Sesser. Uh, they provide some great leadership and interaction with us, and I just want to be involved in those discussions as well. And the next one is the standards of cover document. I know this has been talked about a lot. Um, we do have some uh, concerns, and before the uh, RFQ goes out, that we can be involved because the standards of cover alone is just a piece of a portion of accreditation, and we'd like to make sure that accreditation is part of the process before we send out an RFQ. I think it's important that the organizations using data and all the other tools out there and the analytic tools that help us you know, deploy our resources and also the restoration of resources, which includes the restoration of the emergency incident technicians and other firefighter safety uh, aspects of the job. So with that, it just uh, two pieces of uh, information there, if we could be included on that, and thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner, I'll entertain a motion to adopt uh, consent items 4, uh, 4A through F. I'd also like to add item 5B um, to our consent adoption. If I could get a motion to adopt those recommendations. 5B. Yeah. 5B is currently on a regular item, but it's, a, it's actually a... And, so, and A is continued to... A is continued. B is, um, is, a, is a pretty ministerial action, so if I could ask that be added to our consent item. Can I get a, a motion to uh, adopt the recommendation? So moved. Second. Second. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. That uh, covers items 4A through F and 5B. We are now on 5C, a uh, report by the department on the uh, certified unit. Certified Unified Program Agency Evaluation Feedback for December 2016. I believe we have some good news here. Yeah. Good morning, Commissioners, Fire Chief, um, City Attorney's Office. Uh, Roy Stone, Cooper Program Manager. Um, today's report from the Cooper Program is based on the state's last response of evaluation and it's very similar to a past reports where we have the closed uh, deficiencies. Um, we got a release from the Program Improvement Agreement some time ago, a few months ago and uh, the state considers the program operating satisfactorily, which is a good st um, status to have. Currently we have officially actually four deficiencies left um, in the program, and uh, three of those are from the State Water Resources Control Board. They want to see consistency in our inspections, um, and so they're going to hold that for a year, regardless of whether we're operating at full compliance or not. So they'll, they'll carry over. And then we have another deficiency open with our businesses, um, because we have a lot of businesses in the program that are regulated and, and they all have to go into this um, state portal, which is uh, California Environmental Reporting System, it takes a lot. There's a lot of mom and pop shops and everything. It takes a lot to get them into there. So um, we're shooting for 90% compliance rate. That's what the state wants before we can close that deficiency out. Um, more importantly, this, um, this time reporting to to you is the, uh, we just started our new uh, state Cooper evaluation. So. This is the first evaluation since 2014, and that started January 5th, um, and uh, we went very well. Um, it finishes up tomorrow. It'll be a closing conference. Um, the state stopped us a couple of times during the presentation and just told us, you know, how professional we are now, and how things are really 
it's on 180 degrees and um, and very very happy. So uh, that's that's good news for the pupa. So the preliminary findings on that report, it's not official yet, but um, it looks like we're going to have a total of 15 uh, deficiencies. Now, four of those are carryovers from the State Water Resources Control Board for the consistency. And then four of those deficiencies were issued to um, LA County Fire Department because they do our hazardous waste inspections in the city. Um, we still oversee their program as LFD Cooper, but um, they had some issues with compliance, and so they got four deficiencies. And just for LA City, we got five uh, deficiencies, and um, and nothing really major. Something that we can we can fix fairly easily. Um, you're always going to see deficiencies in any evaluation because they're always trying to lift up the program status. Um, and, but for us, one of the bigger deficiencies we have is the education part of it. And so we have quite a few inspectors that don't meet the education requirement to be Cooper inspectors. Um, and so this is the first time the state's looking at it. Um, we will be working with the fire chief, the fire marshal, assistant fire marshal, and other stakeholders to kind of work out a solution to that and, and how to move forward. Um, and just for 2017 going forward, our, really our goals for the program is to clear out the deficiencies as quickly as we can. We have to do a little bit of work on our staffing structure. Um, we plan to bring in a bunch more um, uh, inventory that we don't currently regulate, so we're going to see more businesses in the program, and that'll bring up the staff um, numbers a little bit as well. And also, we have some um, technology initiatives coming forward as well. So, and that's one thing too. You know, we've not only just done the minimum, we met the minimum, but we've gone above that as well. And in fact, in um, next month, we'll be presenting at the Cooper Conference on some of our techno technology initiatives that we've done in the program, and one of um, our fire inspectors will be doing that. And that's the first time in probably a decade for um, LAFD, so that's awesome. So in closing, I want to thank the Chief Terrazas, um, Chief Crowley, and, and Chief Harvey, and just everyone for helping make this uh, couple, you know, be what it is today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, 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 before you go, we get a couple of questions. Uh, any questions from the uh, commissioners? No? Okay. Um, just so so on the, I know the education piece um, ensuring that our folks have met all the requirements um, has been something we've talked about in the past that's not currently listed as a deficiency it's in the it's in the preliminary list of deficiency for this round so this new evaluation which started January 5th they've already sent us a preliminary list and that's one of those deficiencies okay, it's not in this report I mean no okay it's not. all right so it's a new one and and that'll be developing over the next couple of months. We've got a lot of work to do on that. Um, so in some inspectors are just underneath, and mm -hmm. some have a bigger gap. So we're hoping to pull as many over the you know, finish line as we can. Sure. Okay. B um, but, you know, I'm the um, I did want to note here, so, so it said that we they've, they've changed our performance status from unsatisfactory to satisfactory, right? So that's a, right. that's a, that's, is that, that's new for this update? Uh, it was. It was new for the past update, the last one before. The last one, okay. Yeah. All right, but we're still satisfactory, so that's yeah. great. Yes. Um, and even with the additional deficiencies, you anticipate we'll still be satisfactory? Yeah, I mean, um, the state has said to me, you know, this is a normal um, evaluation we're getting now. It's not an evaluation of a Cooper that's struggling. I and so we're not in corrective action anymore, I guess. You, we're not really in corrective action anymore. We're in sort of a standard... Evaluation. Well, we're not on that program improvement agreement. That's anymore. what I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that was the last step last time before they take the program away. So we didn't get that this time, which is great. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we got a lot of kudos. And so, you know. Good. Sounds like sounds like we're we're on on stable footing here, which is great. Okay. So we will learn more than at your next update about what this new report tells us. Right. And um, it sounds like our thorniest issue is going to be this this staffing issue. Uh, moving forward. Yeah, that'll be the next challenge for us. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, can I get a motion to uh, adopt the recommendations for item uh, 5C? I move uh, BFC 17-010. Very good. You got a second? Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 5C is adopted. Um, we're on item 5D now, verbal report by the Department on the Youth Development Programs. Good 
morning, Commissioners, Ms. Gomez and Council, Chief Terrazas. I'm Alicia Welch. I'm the commander of the Firefighter Recruitment Section. I'm here to provide a 60-day update in response to the uh, Board of Fire Commissioners Motion 16-104, requiring that the LAFD uh, review and redesign our LAFD youth programs focused at standardization, consistency, accessibility, sustainability, and dedicated program oversight. And I want to say personally thank you, Commissioner Glazier, for coming to our meeting last week, our work group meeting provided a lot of good um, vision and clarity to our members who've been working really hard on this. And I'd also like to thank Captain Eddie Morez, who spent uh, the last year with us in firefighter recruitment, who promoted in uh, October to Captain 2 and went back to the field at Fire Station 1. So he put a lot of time and effort into the build out of the high school magnet. We just want to publicly thank him for those efforts. Um, to reiterate what we talked about last time, the youth program redesign has been broken down into four phases. Uh, the first one being the four cadet, um, four bureau cadet model, which I talked about in my last briefing. The youth fire academies is the second phase, which I'll talk about today. And then the high school magnet is our thir third phase. And uh, we had a meeting on January 11th to really start working on that. And then the phase uh, four is crew three. We'll be meeting with them in March to start working on a standardization of uh, their program. So since the last briefing, uh, Phase 2 Youth Fire Academies, uh, the work group met in December, and we picked a, uh, a work group chairperson, which is Fire Paramedic Mike Meza, who's been involved in the Youth Fire Academies with uh, Chief Crowley for many years. Some of the things that that group worked on, the, the detail of folks from all uh, all four of the youth academies, we had members there from all four academies so that we could seek their input and buy-in. The things that they worked on and completed during that four-day detail include uh, redesign of the uh, uh, or development of a work plan. They redesigned the student manual. They created a task book. They created a meeting schedule and staffing plan. They did a facilities and equipment assessment. They talked about uniform standardization, so we don't keep on buying different uniforms for every youth academy. Uh, hopefully we'll get them in a similar uniform. It'll reduce cost to the department. We talked about uh, budgets. We had budgets um, developed and have worked with Karen on those budgets to include uh, her to reach out to Pelican, who, who donated 19 um, coolers for our youth programs. Um, what's also happened in the near future is we sent in a senior project coordinator uh, position description and budget uh, request for that position and also a firefighter three. Um, and we've also been discussing how, how do we best market these youth programs so that we capture the audience that we're trying to get. So phase three of the program will be starting on next month in February. I have a new captain here to introduce, Captain One, uh, Rich Carlin. Rich, wave to everybody. Rich is uh, taking Captain Merez's place and will be overseeing all of our youth programs, but uh, mostly for the time being the high school magnet programs. So in February, we'll start a very similar process where we have a work plan that does that um, describes our goals and objectives and timelines and who's in charge of what. Um, currently, the high school magnet program is ongoing at Wilson and Banning, and this summer we'll start at Dorsey and Monroe. Uh, Rich attended a meeting on the 12th with all the high schools, so we've started that recently where they meet on a regular basis, so all the high school administrators are working together, sharing uh, best practice. And um, we're constantly working with Karen and June and her staff to try to get us funding for all these programs. Uh, the last phase, as I mentioned, is Crew 3. Uh, we'll start working on a work plan with them and redesign probably around March so that we can make sure that they're part of the building block of the Train to Hire program, which Commissioner Glazier is so interested in and the rest of us are interested in. We'll start working with them in March. Um, 
branding. The personnel department has done a really great job at creating a campaign, a professional campaign, very similar to Quigley Simpson's campaign, um, focused on youth, and that should be coming out soon. Um, we're planning right now for our second uh, LAFD girls camp, will be held, which will be held in Operations West Bureau Fire Station 59 um, on April 1st and 2nd. And we already have some funding um, secured for that through the First End Fire Foundation, which is Mark and Lynn Cohen. Uh, the camp will be followed by a two-day seminar called Women in Fire, so April 3rd and 4th, and that'll be at Drill Tower 40. And that camp is devoted to the uh, retention and development of female firefighters and officers. So we meet with you regularly. We tell you about all that we're doing to uh, recruit uh, a diverse workforce. We believe firefighter recruitment section has a role in the retention and the development of the women that we already have and the women that are working in our region in uh, the fire service. So we'll be putting on our first seminar with the support of uh, Chief Terrazas. One day will be hands-on uh, tool uh, man manipulation, and the second day will, will be leadership development. Um, uh, thing, one thing that's important to mention, uh, last week on the 11th, my staff met with the uh, LAFD Historical Society. They're interested in um, partnering with us to bring the youth that we're developing in our youth programs into uh, the museums and some sort of role and mentorship um, capacity there. So we had a really great meeting with the folks at the museum and which led us to the development of a new concept uh, called the Volunteer uh, Network. So if you guys didn't know it yet, we had more than 9,500 applicants, uh, firefighter applicants for the recent firefighter openings here in LAFD. 6,800 of those people took the test and applied. We're only going to hire uh, less than 300. So we don't want to lose all those people that we've gone out and attracted and brought to our department. So by the uh, creation of a volunteer network, we can bring them in and connect them, connect them to opportunities like the museum, like the girls camp, like our youth programs, so that we can keep them involved and engaged in our programs in the community and what we do. So the next uh, testing cycle we have, we'll have a whole bunch of people who are already vested in the LAFD and um, ready to jump on board with us when we hire again. Uh, that concludes my youth development report for this 60 days. Are there any questions? I would just like to uh, uh, I thank you very much for all the work that you're doing because uh, it's been an interest of mine from the very time I came on the board to uh, about the uh, cadet program. But uh, could you also just let us know when you're having these meetings and events? Uh, can someone just send us like a little calendar? Uh, I mean, a uh, print out or something so I can put them on my calendar. Um, the different events that your department is doing. Um, that would be helpful for me then I could either plan to attend and, but I'm happy to hear that the uh, girls camp will be April 1st so now I can calendar it and put everything else out of the way because I definitely want to come and see what it's like this year <laughs> because last time I had a conflict. Uh, but if you could just let us know as a commission when the events are taking place or any other meetings like the meetings with the high school principals or anything that's like that we could attend just to see what's going on uh, and hear what's happening with those with that particular program. Yes, Commissioner. Just so you know, our regular meeting schedule, um, we meet every second Wednesday with, with the, the high school. No, this, this one is all the members that are involved in our youth programs. So Crew 3, Cadet, High School Magnet, and... Um, so the second Wednesday? So we meet on the second Wednesday at Frank Hodgkins. Okay. And then on the third, uh, 8 o'clock. Okay. The third Monday of the month. First level. <laughs> it will be now on the first level. Yes, ma'am. It has to be a handicap accessible. Yes. I'm sorry. There goes, I have a handicap. Yes. Really We're doing a lot be to work on that. I did not have a handicap. It should be an accessible place. So the second Wednesday, the third Monday, we meet with Commissioner Glazier and Commissioner Nenberg, 
and that's more of a planning and chief write out. We meet on the third Monday, and uh, we'd love to have you participate in that. And all of our special events that we have, we'll make sure you get an invite. Oh, thank you. I just, I just want to say thank you so much for the tremendous work you've been doing and what all the groups have been doing to make this a universal program, you know, and that one feeds the next and it builds on itself so that it becomes actually, you have members that from the community that are familiar with the department and the culture and are ready to become firefighters here. So I just want to say thank you so much and I just see this as a very, very robust program that you guys are all working on and I'm very impressed. I'm excited about the girls camp and the the women's leadership seminar as well. So thank you so much for taking the lead on this. You're welcome. I'm excited to meet with you on Thursday to talk about funding opportunities for those two events. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, uh, as Chief is echoing, echoing thanks to the Commission, uh, I have see, been able to see firsthand the progress we're making on, on these things. I think it's great. Um, the, uh, if, if, as we, yeah, I think we've got two of these presentations left before we get to our, our uh, um, hope for implementation of, of the next fiscal year, which is when some of the new um, staffing hopefully will come through. Um, Maybe at our May meeting we could um, we could we could talk about maybe some uh, ways for the commission to actually see some of the, the structural elements of the program that you guys end up putting together on that. Um, and also, I'd love for us as a commission to be able to adopt a, a, a three-year staffing plan um, that we can um, just lay out there so that as we go into every budget season moving forward, um, you know, we have a, a kind of a preset. Um, goal that we want to reach in three years for how we would like to see staffing grow um, and how that would commensurately su um, support the goals of each of the programs, including our, you know, how, how do we adequately staff our magnet program, how do we um, ensure that um, uh, we're, we're hitting an enrollment goal for our, our cadets um, and um, the other, other youth development opportunities that we're going after there. Um, so I'd love to see that. Um, when we get that, it's probably in May, I guess, so there should be plenty of time for that. Um, uh, but you know, and I also want to, you know, in, in in meeting with the work group, I think one one of the um, important conversations that we were able to have is what the appropriate balance is of of youth development and really preparation for the fire service, um, and how that balance should should progress over time as some as we have um, uh, young adults um, uh, in our program. Um, and you know something we were we were discussing was how to create an inclusive program on the early end so that we give as many youth as possible an opportunity to be exposed to what we do, um, while while simultaneously recognizing that as youth progress, um, the the program gets a lot more serious pretty quickly, um, and we're talking about leaving folks um, leaving um, young people alone in a fire station. Um, while the crew may be out, or eventually as they become ride-along certified, ensuring that they can be, uh, they have enough skills and, and, uh, and physical fitness to be safe on our apparatus as we go out on calls. So it really is a, um, it really is an interesting progression there that, that presents some unique challenges, but they are challenges that I know that we're up to solving um, and, uh, and, and bringing in that real, that youth development mindset and, uh, on that early side. Um, as we're really developing young people, whether it's for a career in the fire service um, or EMS as firefighters or paramedics, um, or if it's simply they get exposure and uh, they spend some time with us, and then uh, even if the vast majority of them are um, doing something different, uh, they will have benefited from um, from the exposure to uh, the upstanding members of our department. So um, continue to to um, uh, to. to see how that goes and, and uh, I appreciate the open-mindedness of, of everybody involved to be willing to think a little bit differently about how this program um, can go in the future. So thank you for all that. Um, with that, I think that ends that item. It is a verbal item, so no uh, motion is necessary. Um, so uh, if there's no other comments, uh, which I have no public comment here, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.